Hello. Chris Duffin here. I'm sitting down with Lee Roy Rocker at uh, Filthy Power Gym in North Las Vegas. And I am doing this for very personal reasons. I am sick and tired of sitting around this 500-ish bench. So uh, if you haven't noticed, I've been uh, sitting down with a lot of the best benchers in the world, which is right here, one of them. 670 pounds uh, last year and uh, almost uh, just missing 706, is that correct? Yeah, just missed 705. So, and uh, you're, you're ready to, 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 to crush through those 700s, right? Yeah, I feel so, better Excellent. than I've ever felt. So this is, this is Rob Bencher, not shirt Bencher. Uh, so massive power here, and we were, we were having some discussions about, uh, I had to hit him up about uh, bench training, because again, I, I'm, I'm sick and tired of having a massive squat and deadlift and uh, a mediocre bench. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your, your bench training. Uh, right now, something I've, I've really been uh, key on is I, I think speed work, and um, you hear a lot about speed work, but speed work for me isn't necessarily just doing, you know, getting through the work and as fast as you can. To me, it's duplicating the movement over a period of time because it's not about necessarily being super fast or quick. It's more about um, just being able to duplicate it in a smooth motion so I'm able to create more muscle memory, just like breathing. As, as it becomes more automatic, when you're on the bench, you don't have to be conscious of doing it. It just you just kind of learn to fire with it. And as you get stronger and you have the firepower, the weight just kind of flies off your chest. You don't have to go through the mental process of prepping and psyching yourself out. You know, as you do when you're younger, I think some of it comes with maturity. But mm -hmm. just you know, just being able to create that mind, um, body, muscle, memory link, and just having to become automatic, just like conversation or just you know taking a breath. Yeah. You know, I see that as a, a lot of people that do speed work, and I think a lot of people actually do it wrong because they, they're just like, poof, poof, and they're not doing anything at all like they do when they're under heavy weight. So they're not actually duplicating that movement, as you say, where, you know, being fast is important, but it's got to be, it's got to be that controlled precision, just like you're going to set up, lock in under that heavy weight, right? Yeah, and I, I think one of the biggest things that I get asked this all the time is I, I don't think it's necessarily what you're doing wrong. It's, it's pinpointing the things you do right. And I think a way to eliminate doing a lot of wrong is by just simplifying the movement. And what I mean by that is when you take flat bench and you apply speed work, there's so many things that could go wrong. You can be moving your head too much. You can flare your elbows too much, your feet, you know, your butt's coming off the bench. But I think the reason I translate that over and do a, so much, I'd say 90% of my program is incline right now is because on incline, you almost eliminate the leg drive in mm -hmm. a sense, and it becomes more of a, not just, not a forced muscling up, but it becomes a forced movement where to be able to go up and wait, it's not because I'm Hercules strong, it's because I found a way to find a successful groove that works for me and through speed and power being able to duplicate it. And, and I think when you take a lot of the little things that can go wrong and you make it so you only have two or three things to do right, which is bring it down smooth under control halfway through gain speed and momentum, and then it's just about the lat and the tricep firing off the chest. Uh, the best analogy is a rocket ship. You have to have a certain amount of speed or explosion from the beginning. It's not necessarily how much, how much fuel determines how far you're gonna get out of the atmosphere, but if you don't have that initial thrust and power to break through the atmosphere, you're not gonna go anywhere. And, and I see a lot of people, and one of the, the, one of the lifts that I think might help you, help you out with that I don't see you advocate a lot is, uh, is the pin press. And I'm not talking trash about people that do pin press, but if you think about it, a pin press is a dead press. And so many people don't look at the bench press as it's, it's an explosive movement. You gotta come down, you gotta gain exhilaration while keeping tension and explode off your chest. And my problem with the pin press is when you just become a pin presser, that's all you're becoming. You're becoming a great pin right. presser. And to get that pin press, you have to really flare your elbows and do so much that's not that doesn't correlate or trans over to what's gonna fire with a smooth bench. You know, I, I really appreciate you calling me out on that because I've been doing a lot of evaluation of my own bench programming lately mm -hmm. and reflecting back on when my bench was really moving up steadily. And one of the things was I was regularly doing explosive speed work on the bench and I'd, I've gotten out of that in the last few years. And I've actually been really uh, contemplating the pin presses again. Um, both of those I went through just because my elbows are tr so trash, so I, I got away from them for that reason. But I've really been going, man, uh, that's also when my bench started stagnating on me, yeah. is when I, I pulled that stuff out of my program. So that's, uh, that ties in right, w right with some thoughts that have been running through my head recently. Uh, so. And it's, it's one of those things where 
you, you got to be you got to be smart enough to know when I, and this sounds this is going to sound really Dr. Phil. You got to be smart enough to know when you're not the smartest man in the room. And what I mean by that is I don't think I have all the answers and I don't think incline is the only way. Even if I get 725 or 730, I'm not going to go out there and say you have to do incline to become an all-time bench presser. I think I take bits and pieces of your work. I take bits and pieces of Eric and I find what works for me and i think the common thing which is going to make you great is you gotta you gotta understand the number one principle is nobody knows your body better than you so if pin presses help you then so be that's what you got to do yeah. but you got to be constantly in a state of evolution where if something hurts you got to tweak a little bit and find there's commonalities in all great lifts but you got to find the one formula that people have in common and works for you you, you mentioned a couple key points there um one you know very intelligent points so one of those is around commonality and also looking at other people. So that's one thing that I try, I, I try to do is, a lot of people look at, they, they like look at you and go, what do you do different than everyone else? And we shouldn't be actually looking at that. We should be looking at, what are you doing the same as Eric Spoto? What are you doing the same as Ryan Canelli? What are you doing the same as the, all those other greats? Because those are the commonalities that are likely gonna be the things that are gonna be the ones that we really wanna grasp and try to apply on other people. Not, not the outlying different thing. Oh, what's that one special exercise you do? Yeah. Right. And, uh, and I think and I think that's a great point. And that's what's going to separate the, the legends from the people that want to be great and the people that just can just become greater over time. There's some people not to name names, but there's some there's some people that were great and phenomenal when they were young and they got burnt out because they didn't learn to listen to their body. They didn't mm -hmm. learn that when you're 22, 23, you can flare and get away with it. Yep. You, you can do a lot of things that you can't get away with when you're older because your body breaks down. But the one thing you'll find in common is you watch a, a Spoto, you watch a Canelli, you watch a Mendelssohn. Not one of those guys flare. I'm mm -hmm. a firm believer if you're going to get over the five, 600 pound threshold and you're going to do it healthy and have longevity, you're not going to be a 20 something, you know, that's burnt out when you're 26, yep. 27. You got to find the one thing they have in common. They all had great lat explosion. They had a great amount of conversion from speed in the transition to fired up. And they were all guys that learned to be tucked. And the one thing I think that helps me in my, my training is this incline. It forces you to be tucked. Yeah. You can't be great and be flared, but that's where you take some of what's the same with everybody and you gotta find what works for you yeah. and apply it and make yourself a little bit different. No, and, 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 and let's not miss that point. I mean, you, you, you pointed out that the incline is a huge part of your training, and I've, I've seen that same commonality amongst a lot of great lifters, not just the benchers, but some of the, uh, some of the great you know, power lifters in general that are, that are solar benches that you see that incline in there. And a lot of people don't see that. I actually have quite a bit of incline in my program, but oftentimes it's on like my repetition day or something like that where I just don't film it so they don't see it on my YouTube or Instagram. Yeah. But if they read my training logs, it's there all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've always seen great value in that movement. It's been, uh, you get a lot of carryover. I mean, just pure raw strength. And you take out, you know, like you said, some of that other stuff uh, yeah. and just work on getting stronger and, and uh, pressing with good, good form. And I, and I really think it's, it's about training, you know, training smarter, not harder. And one of the things for me, I'm not, I'm not scared to admit it. I, I, as much as I love to go heavy and as much as I loved Monday night bench when I was 22, 23 in college and people want to take bets and how much are you going to do tonight? At, at 30, 38, 39, I can't come in every Monday and do heavy 600 pound flat bench. It just, it kills my shoulders, you know? And, and I'm not scared to admit it because if, and I'm a firm believer and you gotta, you gotta help everybody around you get better for the greater good of the sport. Because if you have knowledge and you sit on it, then the sport's gonna die with you. And if someone could take my methods and do it better and beat me, then so be it. Because I can't become complacent. I can't sit at home. I can't hash my tag to a championship. I got to get <laughs> off my ass and I got to work. Yep. You know. And if and if I'm not willing to do it, and someone else is willing to do it, then I didn't deserve to be a champion or not a champion for that long. Yep. You know. And kudos to his people if they want to apply my methods, Eric's, anybody's. Yep. Because there's not one real way, real way to do it, but there can only be one champion. Yep. There's many ways to skin that cat, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's something I always tell people. You know, it's there's a lot of different methods, and you got to find, like you said, you got to learn yourself in the long run. And I, I see a lot of, like you said, those young people that they're like they're going to be the next greatest thing. I'm like, N you never know. They, they've got to stand the test of the time. I mean, how long have you been in? How long have you been training? Uh, I, I started, you know, I started training when I was 13, and I, I think, and I, I was talking to Eric about this the other day. I think one of the things that we had in common is me. Uh, by the grace of God, I met an awesome woman. I got married and I got complacent. I took some time off. 
but I think it prolonged my career because I wasn't in the gym from the time I was 22, 23, bench pressing five, six, seven hundred pounds. And to me, knock on, I've never had a pec tear, never had a serious yeah. injury. And I think the same thing with Eric. Eric took a break. A lot of the greats, Mendy, they all took breaks because there's the other thing that you got to take into consideration. You're going to become naturally stronger in your 30s. And, it, and if you don't believe that and you yeah. think you have to do everything about it before you're 30, then you're missing the boat. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I, I think about the positives and negatives of my training during that period because I, I trained all through that period, those ego years, right? Yeah. We just come in and we don't listen to anyone, right? Because it's, it's like you're strong, you're not going to listen to what people have to say, I'm going to do my own thing, and you know, it's all just ego lifting, maxing out, all that stuff. And I trained through those years, and my body's fucked up. That's the stuff I deal with today, but it's also the stuff that made me seek out the ways, and that's why I share so much information today on how not to be that person, not to be me, and de be dealing with some of those, some of those issues. But that's, you know, I survived it. But mm -hmm. I've got to deal now with how do I bench now with these issues? How do I, you know, so on. So it's, uh, yeah. I definitely see what you're saying. And, and it, it, it comes down to you just got to be, be able to be, a, you know, a man amongst men, and just, and I say this, you know, time and time again, just to be great, you got to be able to handle the truth. And I got a cliche is, uh, is if you want to be great, you got to be able to listen and take the criticism with the pat on the back. And to me, and I, I notice you and your philosophies, is you're not going to sugarcoat it. You have to be able to handle the truth raw and unfiltered. Yep. If you want it sugarcoated, go buy a fucking bag of cookies. <laughs> yep, exactly. I know at my gym, sometimes <laughs> they'll be like, it's like this big major deal when Duffin gives you a compliment. It's yeah. like, <laughs> you can ask our cameraman over here. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I got a compliment. <laughs> I got to put that on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> but, you, you know, gotta, you, you got to earn it. You know, we're not mm -hmm. going to you know, just great job today, great yeah. job. And you, you lifted like shit, you know. Yeah. Uh, Girl Scouts don't sell pat on the back cookies and Gatorade don't come and get them next time champ flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one, man. All right, man, All thanks, right. brother. Hey, thanks for the time. All right, thank All you. Right. If you'd like to support the production of further content and maximize your athletic performance, check out kabukistrength.net. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and the methods to maximize your performance. There's constantly adding new products to our site, so please check it out. All that's left is for you to bring the attitude.